Hello, everyone, and welcome to War of the Stars, a Star Wars podcast. Coming to you, as always, from deep within the Outer Rim, far beyond the watchful eyes of the Galactic Empire. My name is John Martali, and joining me, as always, is my co-host, Garrett K. Jones. How's it going, everybody? Going okay over here. A little windy here, but otherwise, uh, pretty good, pretty good. Yeah, we actually had some pretty good rain here over the last... Uh, last few days um like at one like at one point yesterday afternoon it was pouring it was been great um like mm. it, last week had been kind of warm and then all of a sudden it, it just dropped off and cooled down and by friday night it was it was pouring rain it was it was really amazing yeah wow yeah yeah it's, oh it's, spring over here has been kind of uh kind of funky yeah. same here uh anyway uh, again, this is a weather podcast. No, it's so, not a weather podcast. It is a Star Wars podcast. Hence it the name is. for the stars, a Star Wars podcast. Yes. And so, we are um, oh, go ahead. I know. I was. I was just gonna say it's been a uh, crazy busy week. There's a lot of dropping on on Disney Plus this last week. Yeah. Yes, there has been. Uh, watch a cu- watch a couple of the, of the new of the stuff. Um, of course, watched. What we'll be talking about today, Bad Batch, the latest episode of Bad Batch. Uh, I also checked out um, X-Men 97, which if you're an old school X-Men fan, I highly suggest you check out. Uh, Very, very good. Uh, Very cool. Um, But we're here to talk about the latest episode of the Bad Batch. Yes, this episode was called, it's uh, it's season three, episode eight. It's called Bad Territory. The description is, desperate for intel, Hunter and Wrecker track down a dangerous bounty hunter. Now, I'm just going to go out on a limb here and say, did this feel like a side quest to you? Oh, it for sure felt like a side quest. Yeah, like, not not necessarily a bad thing, but it definitely felt like I was playing it, like if I was playing a video game, this was a side quest. Yeah. Yeah. And I uh, don't exactly know why they spent their time keeping like Crosshair on the back burner. I mean, I get it; they're kind of concerned about him, mm-hmm. how he would be in the field, but like he's not so much of a threat that they couldn't have used him. So yeah. I'm, I'm, but I I did like the fact that we get a little bit more uh, bonding between Crosshair and Omega. We mm-hmm. we get to see um, Hunter and. Uh, Hunter's more, you know, very by the numbers approach and meets Wrecker's very, very uncontrolled, very lax um, handling of things yeah. and working to their advantage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's definitely been good. Like to see these two characters really grow and flourish as kind of the main members of the team has been pretty cool. Yeah, it has been. It has been. It was, uh, I I don't know how I feel about this episode because I think this is the closest we've got to a filler episode so far this season. I would agree. I, I would mean, I wouldn't call it a full filler episode because I think you still had enough in there that connected to the main the main overall plot of this season. But yeah, it did feel like a divergence from where we had been. Yeah, everything felt very, very tight. Everything very uh, felt very uh, contained. Now we're going off the rails again because, like, it made sense in episode in episode two, Paths Unknown, mm-hmm. uh, where we started dealing with um, Wrecker and Hunter, you know, in search of Omega. That made sense. This, yeah, it just feels like we needed to have a like the only reason why the characters were split up again is to make the plot happen. Yeah. And it doesn't feel like it was necessary. I mean, keeping Omega out of public view, fine. That makes sense. But there are plenty of people that could have watched her back and taken care of her. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I could have even, even if you would have had a line in there for why Crosshair wasn't there in the fact of the less people we have in this mission, the better, you know, it's something that's right. to be small, you know, only one or two people. We don't want to get, you know, get Finnick spooked by having too many people there. And, but 
Yeah, uh, I, it was still I, a I decent did, episode. It it was, and I I one of the things I liked about the episode was that, like I said, the overall uh, connection with with Crosshair and Omega is growing. I, uh, I, like that. I did like and, that. And especially considering the fact that he had been so standoffish with her from the very beginning. However, um, there's a part of me there. The, the, the writing side of me wants to say, this is a, like, it's setting us up for not, not necessarily disappointment. It's going to set us up for some heartbreak because I feel like if, if your projections about, um, uh, about Crosshair being like a secret mole or, or a plant of some kind, and he doesn't know it. Mm-hmm. And he's actually the, tra- the tracking fob that they're following. Like mm-hmm. it would, it would make so much sense that he would start building this rapport with her. And then all of a sudden it pull they pull the rug out from underneath everybody. And he turns out to be the, uh, the actual enemy. Mm-hmm. I hope they don't go that far. I mean, I, as far it, as her, him turning out to be a villain, yeah. Oh, we have a little guest here. Sorry. No <laughs> I, worries. Go on, go on, girl. <laughs> anyway, uh, bye, babe. Bye, babe, girl. That was the co-host of uh, Star Wars: The Eyes of a Child. By the way. Uh, check it out on YouTube. It's a really good show. So I've yeah. heard. So I've heard. Anyway, um, where were we? <laughs> we were that, talking about the potential for Crosshair being a, a triple agent. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't mind if it's like he's been implanted with a tracking fob or something like that, but I don't want him to turn out to be evil, to use a term. Yeah. Use, you know? It's if it's something that's beyond his control and he has to fight through it. Um, I do think, as I said before, I do think that he is going to sacrifice himself by the end of the series. Um, I do too. Um, it makes the most sense. Uh, it also yeah. makes just the fact that we don't see them in Rebels with, uh, with, um, Rex's group that that the, that maybe all of them something happens to all of them. Yeah, that would uh, that would also make sense that the, that there's a a kind of an on mass uh, killing of these of, of yeah. the team. Yeah, I mean the I, one I that makes I, I go back and forth between which one to me would make the most sense to survive and maybe take care of Omega. Yeah, um, and either either any of them uh, between Hunter and Wrecker would make. I think Hunter makes the most sense, just just because of his, you know who he is and who he's become mm-hmm. um, as like the father figure to Omega. Um, whereas Wrecker seems more of the uncle type. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. Um, it would be interesting to see how this how this plays out because I'm I'm curious to see what's coming up next because I'm looking at the release schedule and the next episode is called the Harbinger and mm. I'm thinking that I feel like this is well because I'm looking at the next we, we're at eight episodes now we're, we've got seven more to go before the end of the uh, before the end of the season and. These are the names of the next seven episodes. Okay. The Harbinger. All right. Which is coming up this week. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Identity Crisis. Point of No Return. Juggernaut. Into the Breach. Flash Strike. And The Cavalry Has Arrived. And with episodes like Identity Crisis and Point of No Return, I feel like either one of two things is going to happen. The, um, my, my prediction with regards to crosshair from earlier in this episode, uh, is going to come true or the remaining operative that washed up on that, on that riverbank in episode seven, 
yeah. is going to yeah. turn out to be tech and he's going to be dealing with an identity crisis. Mm. And point of no return is going to be that that crucial moment when I think you're I think someone may die. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. That would be interesting. It would be. I'm still but not sure how I how I what? feel about the idea. I'm still not sure how I feel about the idea of tech returning. I yeah, I'm I'm kind of with you on that. Like I'm like it would be great if he did, but I think it would be better if he didn't. Yeah. Uh, just simply because it would give his death a lot more weight and more meaning. I, I agree. Yes. Yes. Now at the same token, if you want to do something to really mess with Omega psyche and really have tech return as someone that's trying to catch her and, 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 but then again, we've seen that with you know crosshair. Yeah. But I don't. I, yeah, I, I go back. You know, yeah, I, I say leave tech, leave tech dead. Yeah. Um, although I will say that with um, with the title harbinger for this for this next episode, episode nine, mm -hmm. um. I think that's where we're going to start seeing Asajj Ventress making a, a, a return into the mm, series. Yes, yes. Yeah, I forgot that she's supposed to be making yeah. a return. And I, so that's my prediction. I'm predicting that she is going to be coming back in that episode because yeah. given who uh, who Fennec Shand was talking about, spoiler alert, Fennec Shand has returned to the galaxy yet again. Um, once again, voiced by the always awesome Ming Na Wen. Um, mm -hmm. I think the person that she was talking to on the other end of that hologram was uh, was Asajj Ventress. Mm -hmm. Although I don't understand why, because Asajj has spent time as a bounty hunter. She would actually yeah. do very well, probably better than Fennec Shand as a bounty hunter. So yeah, I mean, she got the that whole force thing and everything. I think yeah. that would help her. But what's interesting is, um, the based on some promo imagery that I'm looking at right now, um, Saj Ventress is wielding a yellow lightsaber, mm. and that's interesting because typically those were uh, those were Jedi Sentinels who did that. Yeah, Temple Guardians. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. Yeah, and where she lands on. As far as her affiliation with the light side or the dark side, mm -hmm. or is she more in the middle? I would say it would seem that she's more in the middle, but yeah. we will definitely see how this plays out as we go into uh, we, this next episode. Yeah, I, I didn't want to use the uh, the uh, the triggering term that sometimes is used for Jedi that are neither light side or dark side, but you it mean seems to get a lot of. Do not speak of that word. The fa some of the fandom will get all upset and. I, I don't understand. I, I don't understand. I mean, it's 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 a middle ground between light, which is usually represented by white, and and dark, which is usually represented by black. I don't, I don't yeah, get I, why people are I, so up in arm. About I don't that. know either. That that can be a whole episode of the debate between gray Jedi and how those who like gray Jedi are edge lords. Okay. You know, you know what? For those of you who are in the fandom who are who are uh, uh, listening to that canon. Or, or watching this, you know what? You can at me. I, I'll tell you right now. You can find me on X and and uh, Instagram at gkj underscore publishing. At me all you want. I don't care. We I will argue this until I'm blue in the face. I will give you a bloody discourse on uh, or dissertation online. I have done it before. I will do it again. Come at me, bro. Shots fired by Garrett K. Jones. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the, the and our, uh, is, our, um, our supporting network, Geek News Now, is going to be like, no, we got to get rid of Garrett. <laughs> no, I was going to say, the thoughts and opinion of Garrett K. Jones do not re always, do not necessarily... <laughs> They do not reflect our parent company, Geek News Now. Yeah. Uh, but my use of tacos does, because tacos are delicious. Anyway, we're not talking about tacos. We're still talking about Star Wars. Anyway, yes. so <laughs> uh, 
Um, the yeah, so I liked what I, it was kind of an interesting environment. Like this, the particular plant that they went to is very much like a Florida bayou. It very mm -hmm. much felt like the Everglades. Yeah, um, complete with complete with space gators. Yes, space gators. Were, though I mean, gators in general can just be scary uh, as heck. But uh, I mean. I mean, I, I lived in Florida in, during the summer of 2007, and I remember walking home from a movie theater, and it's middle of the afternoon, and the house right next door to where I was living, there I, I'm like, oh, there's a log in their lawn. Oh, no, the log moved, and it yawned. And I'm like, where's my key? I need to get inside. Yep. I did not Florida. want to be outdoors when that gator uh, realized it was hungry. So... Space Gators, uh, terrifying. It was actually kind of an intense scene, um, yeah. but I thought it was I thought it was well paced. It it went well, and it was uh, good to watch. Uh, the uh, the villain reminded me of um, if you ever remember the old show uh, Space Ghost Coast to Coast, the uh, the the sidekick, the Mantis sidekick. Yeah, yep, I was thinking yeah. the exact same thing. <laughs> like, Brack, and it was kind of was it Brack? What? No, Brack Brack was the other guy. I can't remember his name. Uh, let me find out. Space Ghost characters. Um, Zorak. Zorak, yeah, yeah, yeah. Brack was the uh, was I, I think the cat dude. No, he was the guy in the uh, the helmet, the red helmet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Zorak was the. Um, the main the yeah he was the uh the praying mantis type character so yeah i i saw the same thing i'm like oh my gosh where where's the dude in, in white tights showing up um but it was a fun episode like there is like i've been reading a lot of uh books out of the alien franchise lately mm -hmm. and so there's kind of that vibe especially going into the derelict uh hut um yeah going in but i i thought this was a fun fun episode it was it was even for i mean a lot of you know filler episodes can always be hit or miss yeah um and as long as you we don't get and i don't think we will it seems like everything seems to be pretty tight um so i don't know how many more episodes it will get like this hopefully not a lot I think that was a problem with last season is we had too many filler episodes. We've talked yeah. about this before. Um, this one seems to be a lot tighter. Like they're really leading into something. And, you know, they really want to wrap this up and get everything taken, taken care of in a, in a nice tight yeah. bow. It does. It does feel like they're trying to make sure that all their eyes are dotted and their T's are crossed with this. Mm -hmm. um, the storytelling has been much more concise than it was in season two. Season two kind of felt like it was all over the place, and they yeah. really weren't sure what they were doing with that season. Yeah. Um, but this season, it feels just like as tight as season one did. So I want to talk to you a little bit about what you think about because it seems like with with this with this show uh and with other shows that they've been doing they've been using this as really a way to I, i'm trying to think of the word i'm looking for they're 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 trying to tie up the loose ends left and the prequel of the, the sequels the yeah sequel trilogies yeah. so yeah like you know it's one of those yeah. things where it's like you you like the, the trilogies, because the trilogies are considered canon more so than anything else, or the, the films are. Yeah. Because the films are what general audience members go to because they've hit the theaters, they've been out there, and people are like, okay, I've seen this. This I know is Star Wars. You know, they don't, you know, a lot of the people that, that have seen the movies, they don't go and spend the hours to watch through the animated series or The Mandalorian or, or any of that. And so it does feel like, um, it, so like when, when that solidified as can with, you know, one of the worst lines of dialogue ever to justify oh, yes. the return of a long dead villain. Yeah. Um, it, they, it felt like they painted themselves into a corner and now everything that's supposed to take place in between the events of the original trilogy and the sequel trilogy has been to 
not necessarily a retcon, but they're fitting that they're trying to mold those pieces to fit in place. And they're having to do a lot of explanation. And I, I feel like that's where they're getting themselves stuck is that they're create like, I mean, don't get me wrong. Everything that uh, I like the way that they're going with Hemlock and his mad scientist project, it makes yeah. sense. And it sounds like something the Sith would do because yeah. the Sith were, were big in, manipulating modern technologies to and and Sith sorcery and alchemy to to prolong their lives yeah. indefinitely. On the flip side of that coin though, it f like the films did something that I think the the films played it safe because the last Jedi start story wise started to take the entire saga off the rails, tried to deconstruct everything pissed off pretty much half the fan base and jj yeah. abrams was stuck having to fix that and, and bring everything back to some level of consistency mm -hmm. and for someone who's not great at developing story he's great at developing moments or sequences but not necessarily story and and he so uh and and character development he's terrible at character development but he's been trying, he, he tried to fix and rectify what Brian John or, or Ryan Johnson did. Um, yeah. And so s since then, everything else that we've been getting uh, since 2019 has been to build a, that gap between return of the Jedi and rise of Skywalker. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. And some of it's been done well, I will admit some of it has been done well. Others, mm -hmm. Not so much. Yeah. All right. Well, I think it's been a fruitful discussion we've had so far. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been pretty good. I mean, what are your predictions moving forward? Because we're 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 now uh, we we we've hit that. For some reason, I thought that we were going to have a sixteenth episode, and maybe I'm wrong. But like for now, we're more than half, or at least halfway, or more than halfway yeah. through the series um or through the season what are your predictions moving forward i definitely think we're gonna see as i mentioned before something happen with crosshair uh as some sort of i'm going with the he's been implanted with some sort of tracking device and that's what's getting the the hand i think it's going to be connected with the hand um but I definitely think it's going to be something that's, you know, beyond his control. Mm -hmm. um, I I think something's going to happen to that home they're on. I think you're going to see some sort of imperial, another, like a, a major imperial attack. Um, I think that it's going to be destroyed somehow. They're just going to, um, they're going to have to have to leave. Uh, it's it's going to be interesting to see when, how long it's going to take them to find out what the whole what the M count is that is connected to the Jedi. Well, if and that's the thing is if um, if my prediction about the Harbinger episode, episode nine, is correct, and we when we finally get to see uh, Asajj Ventress again, mm -hmm. she's going to be in the know. She's going to be providing them what that information is. Mm -hmm. um, if we don't see her until later, obviously we won't get the, they won't get those answers. I mean, we as audience members have that answer because I mean, we've watched, you know, the Phantom Menace and we know what a midi chlorine yeah. count is, but you know, these characters are not in the know on that. So now, um, know, it will be interesting to see how that plays out. Here's an interesting take. What if it ends with Omega going off with uh, Asajj to train? that she takes us that Asajj takes her as a student to teach her the ways of the force. That would be interesting. I, yeah. you know what, as much as I was uncertain, I see, and here's the thing, just because she has a high midi chlorine count doesn't mean that she has access to the force. I mean, yeah, she's got some preternatural gifts. I'll, I'll give her that, but that mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily 
that doesn't necessarily mean that she actually has force wielding abilities. This is true. Um, she just might have like a, a, a gift, uh, like an aptitude for perceiving things before pe other people do. Yeah. And yeah. while and while you might have some Jedi uh, or some force, she might be force sensitive, but not force wielding. Mm -hmm. So if she's not yeah. a force, if she's force sensitive but not force wielding, it wouldn't really make sense story wise. Yeah. Um, but if they do go that route, it wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing so long as they write it out well. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, it, it would, you would, you'll give us an ending where you can have your, your characters like Wrecker and Hunter. Mm -hmm. You can have that separation where they have to leave each other. They have to go their separate ways uh, without, you know, them dying. And you could have a really emotional moment where, they're saying their goodbyes. Yeah. Where, um, yeah, it's definitely going to be very, very interesting. Um, I agree. Um, yeah. I'm, so I'm, I'm really kind of curious to see what else comes of this because like, I mean, as you've stated, you know, the Bad Batch, none of those characters show up in Rebels. Like, how is it? Do we want to say, hey, you know, this looks like it, it the, sh the way the show is going to go is going to pull a uh, Rogue One where all the main characters die? I don't know. I mean, it would be, it would be interesting. It would be definitely be a uh, dark. But then again, Clone Wars is not shied away. The Clone Wars has not shied away from doing dark stuff before. Yeah. Um, I'm interested to see if if how many of these little you know some of these characters that we've run into, not just in this season but in prior seasons, will show back up again. Yeah, it would be it would be quite interesting to say the least. Um, like like th there's those uh, those clones from. Was it season episode three, where they're on the where they crash land on that planet, or record yes. hunter? Yes. Um, have you know where they show up at? Yeah, that would be cool. Because like, so, I mean, we one of the things that we never got any any real insight on was like what happened to any of the clones that hadn't been fully developed for. Uh, for warfare yeah like did they i mean were they recipients of the implant that triggered order mm -hmm. 66 and if so what what did they do when that was when that was set off because if there's no jedi around for them to kill they what do they do now yeah so that's that's one of those questions that has been stuck in my mind for the last few weeks as we've been going through this series yeah yeah so all right well this has been it been a fun like i said a fun little discussion uh as we wrap things up here garrett why don't you tell the people out there there where they can find you at all right well you guys can find me at well i shared it earlier but you guys can find me on instagram and x at gkj underscore publishing where I talk about my books, uh, which are called uh, the series is called the Archives of Asink Ran. There's five books in that ongoing fantasy series. There are some some nods to my my love of Star Wars in those books. Not many; they're subtle. Uh, but I also promote my show The Right Way, which you can find on YouTube just by searching GKJ Publishing or going to YouTube.com/slash GKJ Publishing. Um, the uh, uh, the on that show, I talk book recommendations, uh, uh, author interviews, and creative writing tips. I have a new episode coming out this Saturday. It's my spring preview and author showcase, which is one of five back-to-back -back weekly episodes that will be playing from the 30th of March all the way through the end of April um, as I go into my, my author interview marathon, which is called Author Awareness April, uh, where each week is going to be a new interview with a different author. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much where you can find me. All right. As for us right here, of course, you can get us hold of us through our email. Right there it is, warthestars1 at gmail.com. 
Also, our handle on X is at War of the Stars One, uh, or you can, uh, oh, if you want to support the show, uh, kofi.com slash War of the Stars. Uh, you can leave a just a little a little tip there uh, for us. It's an easy way to do it. Um, Five bucks, as the tip is, tell Garrett that the Gray Jedi don't exist. <laughs> we need to do that. We need to do that episode. Yeah, we I, do. Yeah, we yes. do. <laughs> yes. Probably, probably at some point in May after a Bad Batch has been wrapped up and we're waiting for the Acolyte premiere. Hey, we have our uh, our, uh, our anniversary show. That Ooh, should be. That's right. That's right. That's in May. Star Wars Day is coming up too. Yeah. Uh, oh, speaking of Star Wars Day, that's going to be a big one. Um, uh, our uh, we have been asked. We will be posting on our our social media uh, as far as pictures of anything that we're doing for uh, Star Wars Day. That day falls on a Saturday, which also happens to coincide with Free Comic Book Day. Uh, so there's going to be free copies of of you know, new titles and stuff like that. They're getting ready to come out this year. Uh, from some of your favorite publishers, including Marvel, which is currently the rights holder for all things Star Wars, uh, since they're pretty much owned by Disney. Um, and so uh, check it out. Go to your local comic book store. Find You can go to freecomicbookday.com. Uh, find out what stores in your area are available uh, for that event. Uh, I know that here, our, our local comic book shop is called DJ's Collectibles. I'll be down there selling and signing copies of my books. But our the owner... And a bunch of his buddies are all part of our local 501st chapter. And so they'll be there in cosplay. And it's going to be fan-freaking-tastic. Awesome. Oh, uh, let's see. So, yeah, there was that one. Um, what else do we got? Oh, YouTube uh, at World of Stars 959510. Right there it is. Uh, you can check out um, not just this show, but mainly we also have, of course, as I mentioned earlier, Star Wars to the Eyes of a Child is there. Uh, myself and my daughter are going through the Clone Wars. We just finished up with the Gungan General, um, which was really fun. Uh, of course, that and the one right before it introduced us to Hondo, everyone's favorite pirate. Yes. Uh, so that was a lot of fun. Uh, be looking for more episodes of that. Um, and... and uh, a little surprises with that coming up, hopefully. Finger. And as always, we're connected Cross with Geek News check. Now. Uh, of course, yes. Geek News Now. Uh, check it out on YouTube and Spotify. The official home of War of the Stars uh, through Geek News Now. Check out all the shows um, on there. Um, and check us out potentially for uh, potential guest spots on those. have been work talking, trying to talk to people. Uh, to get on other shows um, and bring people on on our show from from the network too. So, yep, uh, yep, cool. Um, and was that it? Yeah, that's it. All right. Uh, as always, remember this is not just my Star Wars. This is not just your Star Wars. This is our Star Wars. Until next time, may the force be with you. Misa called Jar Jar Binks.